Hi, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. And I'm still at it with Corvettes. They're coming in hot. And we've got new colors on the channel today. This is our first Riptide Blue Metallic uh, Corvette. And next week, I am going down to Bowling Green. So this is gonna be a busy week of Corvettes for me. We've got the E-Ray on its way out today. And uh, we've got Hummers that are here now as well, all on today's episode starting right now. All right, back in action at Auto Trim Design here with this beautiful Canada First Red Mist Metallic E Ray. This is uh, already starting to be a very cool and unique build. There's a couple of components to this specific build, which we're gonna focus on. And it has to do with the level of experience that this individual has in already a C8 Corvette. He is what we would consider a track enthusiast. And uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing, or we already just did with Auto Trim, is doing a track preparation PPF. So with that in mind, with this being a wide body vehicle, there's a couple of areas in particular that we focused on that we don't normally do on a normal PPF job if we're just doing the front end. So we're gonna focus on the back, but obviously with these lights, I wanted to shoot the video in here uh, before we get it back to do uh, some of the other additional things. This is the area that we're talking about. With this being three and a half inches wider than a normal uh, C8 Corvette with these huge wide tires and then the extra large intakes on here, we wanted to protect it. I'm not gonna touch it, but take my word for it that all of this area here has been protected, including the lower areas with the rocker panels. Um, I'm still looking for someone to come out with a really uh, stylish, way of designing and, and, and protecting this intake. With these intakes on the wide bodies in particular, they're quite large. And for example, I was in my Corvette the other day and I pulled a leaf out that for some reason got lodged in there. And, and to me, I think that if there was one cost effective thing that you could do to proactively protect these cars, these side intakes in particular, um, need to have someone come up with a, a nice way of being able to protect it without inhibiting the amount of intake that it needs. Because these are obviously functional design and they're there for a reason. So I'm not trying to get someone to block it up for the lease because then you're going to be starving your vehicle of heat exchange air. But there needs to be something that we can come up with. So we've done a PPF that is focused on the fact that this is a wide body. And because of that, with this track PPF, we've done the rear components of the vehicle as well. Now, we're also going to be doing a tire swap on here. So the E-Ray comes standard with a Pilot Sport 4S. You can get a ZEK performance package, which upgrades the tires and also the magnetic ride control is upgraded. It's a nominal cost. In Canadian dollars, it's $575. So with that, what you're going to get is the more aggressive tires, which you can see here. This is the Pilot Sport 4S's. But you can also get a set of... Uh, all seasons which is standard so red mist metallic goes without saying that this has become a very um, beautiful color under these lights in particular i wanted to showcase it here at auto trim design where it got its track preparation done bye bye corvettes three happy men in, in godrich ontario are going to be very happy there's a z at the back there he went to strathroy which is a little town outside of here and i guess the guy was jumping up and wanted to give him a frencher he was so excited for his Corvette to be delivered. Um, all right, enough about that and on to our inventory here. Um, Riptide Blue, this is an overcast day and I love it whenever I have some weather to showcase colors because it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you have your Corvette out. And if you're like me, you wanna drive it. And this is um, a really great opportunity to showcase what a color is made of. You know, we have, seen red mist metallic and it's glory it's inside right now um and this is a metallic color as well it's a new color it is also going to be on a couple of the suvs for chevrolet uh we have let's pause the screen there so you can see this is a 1lt z51 hardtop convertible with the forged black wheels very rare option and thankfully um we were able to get it. So out of the box, this one is pretty much ready to go. And 
it is, in my opinion, a very cost-effective build at making it look sharp. We've got a lack of um, creature covenant items, which have been put in the funds for that into aesthetics. So for me, um, I think that this is a really great build if you're wanting to have something that looks the part. There is not a lot more you could add to this, in my opinion, to be cost-effective in style. And that, to me, is important. You gotta weigh your budgets based on what you're trying to do. And I respect the fact that this individual was more focused on having a really cool paint color with the right finishes on the outside and uh, was willing to make a sacrifice on some creature comforts on the inside. Now this is Sky Cool Gray. I absolutely love it. We've seen this combination work quite well in the past with Elkhart Lake Blue. That is, I think, the same case on this. I'm not gonna be taking these seat covers off right now because with this being a lighter interior, as you can see, this is what happens and we have to spend extra time on making sure that we get it perfect. So we will always make sure that we can protect these vehicles as much as possible. This is one of my favorite ones to leave on. And actually, I don't even think I've taken them off of the inside of my Z06. And I'm now at three, 400 miles. Still got a little ways to go in terms of the break-in process. But uh, I, I don't like taking them off because I just love having this little area here. Actually, this is something I need some help with. If we can find a black or clear version of this tape, I would really love to be able to have it for when I um, drive to places that I'm, I'm delivering a car to. So I'm not trying to outsource um, stuff on you guys, but if any of you guys know where you could get a non-yellow version of this tape. It's like um, masking tape, but a very, very mild version, and it has almost like a waxy finish on it. It's absolutely fantastic because it doesn't leave any residue when you have it on either a 2LT, a 1LT interior where it has the soft touch surfaces, or a 3LT where it's on some full grain leather. Um, so this is, this is something that I actually really wanna find. Um, because I use this tape quite a bit for uh, marking up problems. So if I see something on the paint and I want to relay this to an individual that's in our detailing team, I'm going to put on here a piece, obviously show them and take a photo, but this is a really good way of being able to mark a note when I have an issue with a Corvette or more importantly, when these big dogs over here get brought in from Arlington because they are just a mess because of how big um, they are when they go onto a rail car over there from Texas There's not a lot of space and the guys with the big boilers here. They love to rub up against the fenders and uh, We have to then mark them up, you know and put tape on it so that we can get them buffed out. So um, There's an adventure for you. Also, uh, I think it's fair that we come up with another contest um, for my z06 in naming it uh, I'm having some deja vu right now as I speak because last year we named Snow White in the Seven Gears and when I was down at the bash, I did hand out quite a few gifts to people that they remembered that we named the Corvette. So as of right now, I've been jokingly calling her Panda or uh, you know some Star Wars related Stormtrooper kind of theme because she's a white on black Corvette. I still need to come up with a name for her. I don't mind Panda, but I don't know if that's as masculine as I was expecting for 670 horsepower. But so be it. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick little lot update. The 3LT Stingray sold in a matter of days. This manual here, 2LT Z51, no idea why it's here. The Heritage Grand Sport, still available. The Grand Sport Automatic with low kilometers is still available. Apparently this is for sale until it goes to Barrett Jackson for 185 Canadian. And then over here, we have the E-Ray. Canada's first in red appropriate because of our heritage and our color and our flag. And um, again, showcasing for you guys today, the weather, it being an overcast day, we've seen what red mist metallic is like on a sunny day. You know, the, fen the fenders and the undulations here do a really great job at showcasing the travel in this paint. There are three different types of metallic flake inside of red mist metallic. There's gold, red, and silver. So you see a lot of different character in the, um, flow of the of the color because of those different types of metal flakes it's not a one-dimensional color and i think that that's what's one of the biggest things that helps attribute this color to looking like it's almost liquid metal when it's in a direct sun 
It just to me gives off such a supercar special vibe. And I really do think that this is gonna become a timeless color in that you can see this in a few years and still think that it is with the times in terms of looking cool and standing out. Now, a couple of things that I wanna note, there are a lot of people on my E-Ray list, but um, I'm not too sure at this point what the time frame is gonna be on getting you one. My E-Ray list is not as large as my Z06 list. At this point, I think I have about 60 folks that are on the Z06 list, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say no to you, but I just don't understand if we're only getting, let's say, 10 Z06s a year, um, how you can understand that you're not gonna get one this year. Uh, we have 60 people on our list. I wish that I could say that there's less people on it, but there's not. Maybe some of those people will back out. So let's say that there's an attrition rate of about 20% on my Z06 list, but there's still gonna be a few years of people buying them guaranteed. Now the E-Ray list is not as long. It's about 35 to 40 people, but the problem right now is we're still ramping up on production. And what that means is, is that until we can get some more volume and some more data points, we really don't know what the ETA is gonna be or what it means for you to be fifth on my list. I have a feeling that right now, there was a favor for the Southern states in getting Corvettes in general for all allocation. And now that we're moving into the spring months, you're gonna start to see that there is a lot more allocation that's pushed up to the Eastern seaboard and in Canada here, because we're no longer in our igloos. Now that we're out of our igloos, we can get some Corvettes and everything is hunky-dory. And that example of that is the fact that I got nine Corvettes allocated to me last week, which is a lot more than I normally get in January, which is about one to three. Um, so where I'm going with this is that I think that at this point right now, with this one being, for example, VIN number 85 off the line, and I believe as of the last Corvette Today episode, there only being about 250 E-rays built, it's just too soon to be able to extrapolate out what you're going to be in my list if you're fifth or sixth or whatever it is. Now, um, a couple of other things that I want to note. I did not realize that the um, ZEK aero package or um, performance package, which is a nominal amount of money, also came with some aero underneath the Corvette. I wasn't able to film it because I was with some clients and I respect their privacy, but underneath here, I don't know if this is gonna be something that I can showcase, but the same kind of aero package that you see on uh, a Z07 package is also on this as well, which is something that I thought was really interesting. I didn't realize that there was some um, uh, aerodynamics on moving the flow and it's done in that rubber uh, material that allows it so that if you bottom it out, it's not gonna um, damage the underside. It'll just rip off and you can get another one for a nominal cost. Uh, chrome wheels, I think that that's gonna be a big thing that we talk about. It's just amazing to think that this is about a 12 inch barrel and it's only five spokes that are keeping your wheel and, and all the, the things that go with it intact. This is a option that is, um, I guess, kind of standard. There is a, a, a painted nickel uh, silver wheel, but they kicked it off as soon as we tried to order it. So this becomes the de facto standard wheel for an E-Ray. And um, yeah, uh, other than that, I think a lot of the things related to how it drives and stuff will cover on some later episodes. I did have the chance to drive it when we went to Auto Trim Design to get the PPF for a track spec put on here. Um, I, I didn't really obviously have the opportunity to let her rip because it's not mine and it's a sold unit and I'm not a hooligan. Uh, so I, I don't really know a lot about how the performance of it works, to be honest with you. Uh, and I mean that in terms of like feeling it and giving you my, my reaction to it. Um, I would have to think that if the LT2 in this has been detuned by 15%, because it's in a break-in stage, that it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the boost here working while it's in the break-in stage. Because to me, that's just counterintuitive. If you're trying to make sure that you relax the powertrain so that you can properly break it in, why would you be trying to throw horsepower at it through the front drivetrain unit? So for me, I feel like this is probably not in its full capacitive state, and that maybe at a later date, once it's broken in, I can do a swap with um, the owner of this Corvette, who is a friend of mine. He can take my Z06, I can take his E-Ray, and we can compare the experiences together. Because that, to me, is an important thing. You know, stats and stuff like that are all fine and dandy, 
But in reality, what this vehicle is like in a real life application is really what I try to do on my channel more than anything. And if I can give you guys some ways to relate to that, that to me is the most important thing that I can do. Because there's a lot of other people out there that have a lot more um, performance based uh, reviews. And I, I just, I don't want to even get into their waters. I think for me to just showcase what colors are and how they can do, and then what you can do in terms of a real life application, that's a good use of my time. So, uh, what else do we have? I think we have some Corvettes in the back. Let's go see those now. All righty, and behind door number one is two beautiful hardtop convertible Corvettes. <sighs> oh boy, we've got some fun to unpack in here. Um, when a Corvette comes in, this becomes my number one priority. But unfortunately, I can't control the weather. And um, right now, especially April showers brings May flowers, we have had some, some intermittent uh, weather spouts. And um, we, we try our best to make sure that we can create that scenario where you can say, you know, I bought my Corvette the way I wanted and then drove it off the lot and took it on its maiden voyage. And I wanna make sure that I can create that scenario for you. So there's a lot that um, I try to do behind the scenes in order to make sure that we can create that experience. And it doesn't always go according to plan. And you're gonna hear about a mistake that I made that I will never make again on this Corvette. Not to take away from the, the beauty of what we've done with this or what the owner has done with this, um, but there's one thing in particular that uh, I did wrong. And I'm gonna do the walkthrough on it and we'll see how long it takes you to figure out what happened. This is a rapid blue hardtop convertible 3LT with uh, a jet black interior, sorry, <laughs> a little um, lapse there. And then we've got behind these very dark tinted windows, sky cool gray. I'll open the top up after we've done the walkthrough on the outside. We've got the forged wheels. And as you guys know, these wheels are um, not uh, the only wheel that you can get. There's one other set of the forge that are still available, but the black set is very difficult to get. The high wing is something that we are um, trying to stockpile as much as possible, but we had almost every single uh, order that came in this week that wanted the high wing. And so um, we're getting low and it might take us a little bit more time than normal to get them. Maybe if I have a chance with my Lyric, when I'm down in Kentucky, I'm gonna stop into a couple of American uh, Chevy dealers and maybe they have more inventory in America than we do here. But for some reason, this high wing option has become a hard thing to get. So this vehicle had a very aggressive amount of uh, PPF done to it, which is an amazing option to get, especially if you are trying to protect your Corvette from everything on day one. There are leaps and bounds of advantages to being uh, an individual that puts that kind of investment on their vehicle and has the entire thing PPF'd. That leads me to where I made a mistake. When you order the stealth package of uh, badging, it is not something that's done from the factory. So just as a quick refresher here, and it might be the dead giveaway on what we're gonna talk about, these are the badges that you get when you order a Corvette. It comes standard in a black set. And there is an option to choose for stealth. And these, oh, geez Louise. Well, these are garbage anyways. They're just for memory's sake. These here are the stealth badges. I had um, the customer want to, to do a full PPF on it. And I forgot to tell my team that this is going to get PPF'd. And so when I planned this out from the factory, this is what was supposed to happen. The car was gonna come in, these were the badges on it. They were gonna go to PPF, they would remove the badges to PPF the vehicle. And then I would just have to order this back script here because the extra set for the stealth emblems that they selected would not be on yet. And accidentally, I forgot to tell my team to not uh, put them on. And so they put them on and they took off the stealth logos and they're coming out of the States on order and they didn't arrive for delivery. So I'm unfortunately right now about to deliver a debadged Corvette and that to me hurts. 
uh, but I'm addressing issues that happen up front so that you guys can be aware of what might be something you need to, you know, let your, your dealer know about. Maybe, maybe pass that along if you're going to get a PVF and remind the dealer that they need to order an extra set in and not put the extra set on. So the efficient thing to do if you are going to be PPFing your vehicle and you want it to look really cool is to do what I did and order this package and then ask your dealer not to apply it until you're done the PPF. That is the lesson here. And um, when you do that, then you, you're very cost effective because then you can, you don't have to pay extra uh, for a second set. You already have it because you ordered it for your vehicle. Uh, let's do something fun here and use this key to open up the top. It's been sitting inside all evening. So there's no water that I have to worry about in terms of it dripping anywhere. We want to make sure it's perfect, obviously, for the customer. And you can see the rapid blue on sky cool gray combination, which I personally think is an amazing combination. This is, this is a, a Corvette fun color. It is, it is an amazing color in terms of the energy that you get. And it's actually something that we even offer on our Blackwing models in the CT5 and CT4 lineup, and it's called Electric Blue when it's in the Cadillac lineup. So a very dark tint done to this. And um, it is uh, a Sky Cool Gray 3LT interior. So the nicest of the nicest for interiors on here in rapid blue with a high wing, forge wheels, black exhaust, black accents, including the nacelles in the top. And it's a beauty. This is really gonna be uh, a looker this summer and I get to make a trip up or one of my associates will and getting the emblems that are coming in a template so that we can put them on properly. So these spaces between the lettering on most high-end vehicles is actually something that is trademarked. So the spacing of the script in the back here, this is something that Ferrari, a lot of companies will trademark the actual spacing on it. So, you know, as much as I do have these emblems here, I'm not gonna even consider applying them, especially because they've already been removed once. Um, I want to do new ones and I, he has them here. So maybe if he wants to put them on his um, garage um, on something like I've done in my office, he can do that. But I'm not even going to consider trying to reapply them unless I have the official template um, so that we can make sure that the spacing is absolutely perfect on there. Moving over here, we have an Arctic White 3LT hardtop convertible. It is um, also got the high wing on it. We, we installed that. And let's showcase what Adrenaline Red with the bright red calipers looks like for you guys. It is um, a nice two-tone interior on here. So with it being a 3LT, this is an option that you can consider to make it have a little bit less red in the Adrenaline Red category. This has a red stitching that comes standard because it is a 3LT and you're choosing uh, Adrenaline Red. It is a very cost-effective thing to do if you're just going to be looking at an entry-level trim level. So a 1LT with Adrenaline Red will still come with the red stitching. Normally, if you're doing a black interior, you have to go to a 3LT to get this kind of interior with the red stitching. But um, when you choose Adrenaline Red, the accent stitching will always come with uh, the uh, red there. So that's another option that's really great. And then we have the stealth interior on both of these models with it being red and that being white, um, it's good to have a contrast and to let those colors do the talking. You've already made a statement with having a bright red leather in your car. There's no need to add any other finishes to this. Let them do the talking. And that's really what you're doing when you're ordering the stealth interior and hence why they call it stealth. You're trying, to, you're trying to settle down other areas to let these areas do the talking. So we're, we're making this stealthy and making it more of a um, background singer than being a lead singer on stage. And so um, I use stealth interiors more often than not to make the other parts of the car pop more. It's not to complement each other. Whereas the opposite could be the case, for example, with a natural interior where it really does well in complementing them and they both kind of go together and make a great statement. Not to say that natural isn't um, uh, fun enough on its own, but when you have that uh, brushed aluminum look, it really goes well and it complements that 
Whereas the brushed aluminum look, in my opinion at least, doesn't really help out this situation as much as letting these do the talking. This contrast on the stitching here is primo. And it actually brings me to a critiquing point on, um, I don't know if it's gonna be on this specific model, but on my Z06, for example, when I got the Sky Cool Gray interior, I was hoping that the stitching on the doors would also be in white to give it some contrast, but unfortunately it's black on black, and that's a big no-no in my books. I think that contrast is one of the biggest things that you can do to help accentuate the um, design of the car. And if you can do that, it makes it look good from a distance better, or <laughs> longer. <laughs> the grammar on that was terrible. Um, also, just a fun note is when you go to the 3LT, you get um, the red stitching on the floor mats as well. So uh, I guess this has turned into a stealth interior lesson here, but it's a good one, so take notes. Um, I, uh, I really do think that uh, if you are looking at trying to budget your vehicle, that the, the fundamentals of the car are always the most important thing to do. And this is an individual that's definitely going to be using their um, money accordingly. So, you know, you, you, you want to focus on the things that you can't alter. And it, I think everyone would agree that there's not a lot of um, interest in modifying an interior on a Corvette. That's something that I would always leave to the experts. So if you have a specific budget, and it might be something that uh, changes over the course of the next few years as you make income or investments or whatever, then focus on the essentials now and then get the rest of it done. So on both of these, there's a different version of that to explain. The PPF on this is an investment. As, as weird as it might sound to your spouse, it is an investment. You are protecting something and there is value added to this vehicle because you did it from day one. If a stone hits this vehicle, you are a lot more protected than you would be if it was on an exposed vehicle. So that is, in my opinion, common sense. And especially if you're looking at this as being a forever vehicle, you'll get your money back. It'll just be over the course of the lifetime that you own it. And on this vehicle, for example, this is an example of budgeting where they wanted to focus on the essentials that they can't modify down the road. So they went with a 3LT interior and they're looking at doing some ground effects and some um, uh, wheels on it at a later date. What the heck is this? Get the F there, you hair. There we go. Now it's perfect for delivery. Anyways, they wanted to focus on other things and I think that that is honestly a very respectful thing and if you look back at all of my projects that I did there are some things that it took me multiple years before I even did on the first Corvette that I owned uh, or the first C8 that I owned you know the exhaust was done year two my Vossens I think I didn't do those until the you know a full year had been on my vehicle um, and that I think is really fun and you can kind of go at a pace where um, you know, the, the story is always, you know, evolving with your Corvette and some people might pick up on that, but it doesn't really matter. The fun thing is, is that you are always pursuing something new, just like you can with your house. If you're doing a renovation on it or your, yourself, if you're going on a vacation, you know, you're rewarding an investment that you had and a great installment to do is something that's easily modified. So a wheel, for example. If this individual doesn't like the finish because they originally wanted black and then they went with this, guess what? He can do that and he can do it at a later date just by powder coating those wheels. But it's going to be very difficult for him to be able to get a painted finish that's perfectly matched to all the other accents in here down the road. It's doable, just like you could change the leather on these seats. But is it something that's going to be very organic and easy to do? Probably not. So let's invest in making those things right from the factory good. And then we'll do the other things at a later date. So I think that is a good way to end this episode. I am going to Kentucky next week. And I also have invested into the channel. I've read enough comments about the wind and the quality of the sound of mine. And I think that the sound is something that I have really not um, done a good job on. So I am happy to report that I have two microphones now that I'll be using. It's windy outside. I could have done it out there. Um, but I wanted to be able to take the tops off and, and showcase them, especially in showing you what we do when it's a delivery in terms of getting them ready. So a little behind the scenes. I do have microphones. I am in Kentucky next week. So if you are at the bash, I hope to see you there. 
I'm Morgan Crosby. Stay tuned for more awesome content and happy motoring.